Welcome to Talking Foreign Affairs with Adil Qadir, an initiative that educates young people on key foreign affairs and diplomacy issues. This interview is part of a special segment brought to you live from Manama, the capital of the Kingdom of Bahrain, where we are covering the 2022 Manama Dialogue, the premier security summit of the Middle East. Today, we are honored to be joined by the Finland Foreign Minister, His Excellency Mr. Pekka Harvester. Minister Harvester, thank you so much for joining us. Thank you. It's my pleasure. Minister, how have you found the conference so far and what are some of your key takeaways? Well, the Manama dialogue has been uh, extremely interesting not only for the for the uh, interventions here and the public debate that has happened in the hall but also for the side events or the meetings between the politicians, researchers, uh, military experts and, and so forth. So we at least have filled our whole day with, with these meetings. It has been very, very useful. And given that we're in the Gulf, what role do you see Finland playing in the Gulf? Well, of course, we have a good bilateral relations to, to all Gulf countries and, and uh, we have just opened a new embassy in, in Doha, in Qatar. We have a Uh, reopened our Baghdad embassy and and so forth. So it's uh, we we are involved in the in the region and of course we are looking now more and more economic cooperation with countries uh, Saudi Arabia, Emirates, Bahrain. Just name it. All of these countries uh, extremely good relations and and we can see that particularly the green investments and and the new renewable energy sources. Uh, Uh, recycling, circular economy, all these green transition, these are very impo- important and interesting topics for us now given the uh, uh, climate change and, and given the challenges that we all face. And of course we can see that uh, from the security point of view when we speak for example about the risks related to Iran uh, we are looking at it from the perspective of Ukraine where the Iran Iranian drones are used and here of course in the region many countries are facing an immediate threat from Iran. So something your country is very well known for is its environmental awareness. I know personally giving your uh, party's uh, stance on environmental affairs. Just explain to us the connection between environmental action and peace. But I have been working for years uh, in United Nations and United Nations environmental program, particularly looking the the connection between uh, peace and environment and actually We started our uh, work in, in, in the Balkans or Western Balkans and then uh, continued in Afghanistan and in Palestine and in Liberia and in Sudan and, and so forth. A very interesting uh, sector. And uh, it's obvious that, first of all, uh, environment can be something that prevents the conflicts and, uh, and, and uh, is peace building too already before the conflicts. Then during the conflicts, of course, protection of the environment, as we know, is very crucial. We don't want any pollution. We don't want any damage to the nature. And after the conflicts, uh, again, environment can be used as a diplomatic tool, for example, in a common river-based management or, or uh, taking care of the cross-border pollution issues and, and so forth. So uh, environment can be a confidence-building tool. And something a lot of people would be interested to know is your accession to NATO uh, application. Now, there is a bit of history. Uh, NATO, Finland was a part of the Partnerships for Peace. the opted for the 2004 option plan. But something I'm very interested in is how you were very, um, you highlighted the fact that by joining NATO, that this will not compromise your principles of human rights, peace mediation and disarmament. Just explain more about your vision for joining NATO and keeping the Finland foreign policy principles? Well, since 2004, Finland has es- expressed that uh, we we have this kind of NATO option in our foreign policy, which means that if uh, the security environment in our area, and the Baltic Sea area, changes, we are ready to consider NATO membership. And of, of course, after the 24th of uh, February uh, 2022, uh, after the Russian attack against Ukraine, we could agree that the security situation has changed dramatically in our uh, area and the and, and majority of the Finns turned to support the NATO membership. But at the same time we say that uh, NATO is an organization for common defense uh, among the NATO member states 
we all guarantee each other's security, but at the same time we have a variety of uh, other uh, political principles and, and foreign policy principles in the, uh, among the NATO countries. And Finland definitely remains to be a country that is for the peace building, finding peaceful solutions to conflicts for the human rights, and, and continues to be an active development partner, particularly because of these environmental challenges and, and the climate change challenges and so forth, which may, many poor countries are now suffering. So one thing you highlight is your country's commitment to dialogue and peace, and something very pertinent is the Helsinki Forum. So could you just share more about that? Well, already for years we have been running this uh, process called Helsinki Policy Forum and, and representatives from Gulf region have been actively participated in actually not only Gulf region but countries like Turkey, uh, the Middle East countries have been uh, involved and it's, it's a, a process with the Chatham rules where we sit down uh, usually in, in Helsinki among these country representatives and, and, and share the common concerns and, and, and looking also to the future. Countries like Iran has also been participating. Now the next meeting, for example, is in Finland, still this autumn, where the women parliamentarians from the region are, are coming together and sharing their views. And we think that this kind of uh, uh, initiatives are needed to, to keep up the, the common dialogue. And of course, we have uh, appreciated very much what uh, uh, Iraq has done in the Baghdad uh, meetings and, and I know that in Amman some plans are now to beginning of next year to have similar meetings but all these processes need also some background work and, and the Helsinki Policy Forum is, is one of those uh, forums where you can uh, share your ideas and, and, and meet your counterparts in a confidential way. So on the note of bringing people together, different parties and mediating, something that Finland is well known for, with the Helsinki Forum, when you've got different actors like Iran with vastly different foreign policy goals, how do you bring a lot of parties to the table with conflicting interests, but still bring them together and find a common solution? Well, that's an interesting challenge. And, and uh, I have been many times now asked uh, regarding the Russian attack against Ukraine, that how you can have peace if there is no trust. And actually, Many people on the Middle East area are saying that, well, there are many peace agreements when there was a zero trust in the beginning, and, and, and luckily we could go on with those peace agreements. When we look to Finnish own history, uh, the deals uh, that we made after the Second World War with Soviet Union, there was a lot of suspicion that Soviet Union will act in a hostile way or even occupy the country after the peace agreement and so forth. Again, uh, we have to... Uh, plan peace agreements which can be even uh, working without the trust, you know, some kind of steps by steps uh, approach where, where both parties are can have the possibility to show their goodwill. And I think we are living in a world that uh, in all uh, situations communication is needed. And we have seen even in the recent conflicts, whether it's uh, issues around Iran or issues around Russia, Ukraine, that, that some channels have to be kept open. And just to finish off, something my listeners would be very keen to know is this concept of Nordic cooperation within Finland foreign policy. Just explain to us the, the way Nordic cooperation works, and how you all work together, and how you all been able to successfully manage security relationships. Well, we have a Nordic, active Nordic cooperation since the beginning of the 1960s, and, and the first, actually, we agreed that the security policy is out of this Nordic cooperation because of Finland and, and our particular position uh, after the Second World War. Uh, but uh, now the Nordic cooperation between the five Nordic countries, Sweden, Norway, Denmark, Iceland and Finland, has been extremely uh, intensive and, and particularly, for example, during the COVID time when when uh, we we had mostly to use the digital ways to to communicate, we had a very very frequent meetings of Nordic foreign ministers and other uh, uh, ministers to share the knowledge about the COVID and and how the countries are reacting and what are our policies and so forth. And now, for example, when Finland and uh, Sweden decided to ap apply for the NATO membership, that was again a topic that we shared very rapidly with our Nordic partners and, and discussed what can be done or our military support towards Ukraine. Again, something that we, we immediately connected to each other. 
Sometimes it's very informal. We can just pick the phones and, and, and call or send the text message sometimes. Uh, but we also have these formal meetings where we sit together and, and so that each and every Nordic country can put to the table any uh, local, uh, countrywide, regional or even global issue that wanted to be touched. And for example, uh, this June we had in Helsinki a Nordic Africa meeting so that the Nordic ministers met with the like-minded ministers from Africa. There were 20 African ministers meeting the Nordic ministers. It was a very successful meeting. Minister, thank you so much for your thoughtful comments and thank you for joining Talking Foreign Affairs. Thank you and, and great that you, you have this topic and so many listeners and people's, people who are interested on foreign policy issues. Thank you.